Hey, nerds! It's Geeks of Cascadia. Geeks of Cascadia. Geeks of Cascadia. Exclusive tabletop game podcast for the uh, Pacific Northwest. All levels of gamers. Analog gaming. Tabletop news. Dungeons and Dragons. Magic. Stupid, mindless bad. There will definitely be some bet. That's probably our best. Lot that, that's, that's, our, that's our best feature. You are listening to the Geeks of Cascadia podcast featuring Steve Hobbs, Paul Anderson, and Joe Costa. Hey, Geeks. It's episode 32 of 32. Geeks of Cascadia. Woo! That's right. That's I'm amazing. your host, Blue Samurai, and I am with the Costasaurus. Hi. And then we got. I'm still Paul. All right, well, we are, if you haven't guessed, we are your podcast at Tabletop Gaming News, Reviews. We interview developers, artists, developers again, and each yeah. other, and we do People, game reviews. Yeah. This many. People I think I said that. This Stuff many. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we play games. Yeah. And we review them right here. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, with that, we have a pretty good show. We got a game review of a game called Azul and from uh, Doug and Kelly, and you will get that uh, after this. In the meantime, let's dive into the news. What about con news? Con news, some stuff we got coming up is uh, uh, my new favorite convention coming up soon is um, Opticon. It's in Squim. Mm. It's August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It's the uh, board game playing and it's very low key and there's tickets available at the door. Not a Transformer con. Not a Transformer con, but that is kind of their symbol, so there may be some tie in there. Maybe mm-hmm. not licensed. Maybe they have Transformers who play games with you. They may, they, they could. Or maybe that would be awesome. Maybe Transformers just to get to the con. That'd be very cool. I mean, that would be cool. That'd be very, very yes, cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Bumblebee! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, in Spokane, we've got Kuro Nikokan, which... Uh, what was that? Kuro Nikokan, uh, which is an anime convention. Uh, they've got lip sync battles. They've got cosplay. Uh, we have... Uh, an, Obon Festival, Spokane Buddhist Temple. That sounds pretty oh, cool. The lip sync? Yeah. yeah it's really, really skit. cool. I want to go to this. There's lots of contests. Uh, there's a mascot yeah. contest. Mascot? That's wow. Kuro Con. It's August 3rd through Wait, 5th. Wait, like mascots versus mascots like, and they're fighting each other? I think they fight to the death. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'd love to see it's that. It's like uh, on the cable <laughs> guy when they go to that one restaurant, which I always forget what it's called, and they're fighting, and he's like, da, 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 da. <laughs> from, Remember that from Cable Guy? Oh, yeah. And he takes the, I that's forgot what the name of that place was, Something Castle. Mm. Like Castle? Something, no, right? that, that's, that's a whole different movie. Is that a yes, whole yes, different one? Is. Yeah. Yeah. But not bad. Oh, yeah. well. Not as good as Dude Where's My Car. Oh, dude. It's also a good one. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's sweet. <laughs> 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 All right, back on track. <laughs> we also have coming up um, in August twenty fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's Dragonfly Convention. Dragonfly and Bill Our Washington. Sponsors, yes, yes, and um, we're really hoping to. Uh, we've got a table there. We do. Whoop. That's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, stop by and see us. We're talking Whoop. to people. Um, I'm hoping to be there all three days, but it might just be oh. Two days. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. I am also hoping to be there many days. Come by and say hi to us and say happy birthday to Paul. <gasps> if it's Friday. Because he's old. Because I'm old. That's my double yes. day. Woo! Yay! 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 Give him a high five, yes, but not right. too hard. Not too hard because I'm brittle now. Oh, right. yeah. He now yes. automatically <laughs> gets into, it's too hard. I hate these conventions. They're so crowded. And then, uh, and then, are you at the age yet where you don't ever remember people's names? Oh, and you just call I, I have always hey, uh, been at that age. Johnson, um, come over <laughs> sometime. It's good seeing you, Jerry. Hey, buddy. You know, that kids <laughs> to get off your lawn. You're over there, bro. You're in a hotel, sir. What's your problem? Get off this hotel, sir. <laughs> and we also have coming up, I believe, in January. Journey. Uh, uh, what is that? OrcaCon. Mm-hmm. Our other sponsor. That's right. At the same hotel, the Hilton in Bellevue, January 11th, 13th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Book your room, get your badges. They're not going to get any cheaper. No, they are not. Lots of rooms. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fantastic. Dragonflight can be like your practice for the hotel grounds. Exactly. Then you know that, I mean, then you'll know what areas Mm -hmm. Orcacon's using. We're pretty much using the same areas. And don't forget, you can still go to PAX, which will also be in August. Oh, wait, no, September. Somebody looked that up. I hope. Somebody um, Google. Um, the only reason I mention that is because they're going to have a section for tabletop games. They've always have a pretty good um, area for tabletop gaming. So and yeah, Orcacon will have a table in Community Row. 
which oh, we've had the last few years. So okay. at least since I've been with you guys, so what, three, four years now? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Pax. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Now. Prime. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, oh, no. 31st no. through September 3rd. Oh, We're going to cut that in out. In Seattle, Washington, which is in the West. Wait, that's so right. If it's a prime, does that mean I don't get any real PAX experience unless I go to the prime? That's right. It doesn't count. Oh, mm -hmm. maybe they should name it instead PAX West. I don't know. Hmm, I'll just that stop too complaining. Regional. It's too regional. This is why Gosh. they refuse to put up our third table world there. problem. <laughs> this Isn't is Gen Con coming up? No, that'd be first world. Uh, yes, Gen Con is coming up in like a month. Yes, anybody yes. I will not be I there. Do I won't be there either. I can't I be there. I'm really sad. But next year. Yeah. Next okay. year I'll definitely go. I'd love to I would yeah. love to check out Origins sometime. Yeah, I think we can go to Origins. Origins. I, I think we I I've got an angle. You got an I've got an angle, angle. yes. Yeah, I got an angle to it. Is it horizontal? No, right. <laughs> I don't know. I like no. I'll look at ninety degrees. Ninety. All right. Well with that let's go into our <laughs> Kickstarter news. Joe. Um well at the time of this airing there's a lot of good Kickstarters that mm -hmm. have ended. However, uh, we still have some other ones that are still on there. There is um, there there's people who really liked a game called uh, Solarius, and it's like a three X game. So it has mm -hmm. the X's with the exception of exterminate. So that means it would be exploit, expand, and explore. But the exterminate is not there, and it's a pretty heavy euro. Like out of a five for complexity, it's probably like a four two five, four point two five, but. It, um, it's a second edition. It now is going to have dual layered player boards so that way like all your pieces fit into it really nicely. Okay. Unlike, unlike, um, oh. It's okay. Right. At what point uh, did that happen? Unlike, uh, <laughs> unlike, uh, what's it called? The well, Terraforming Mars, <laughs> where in Terraforming mm -hmm. Mars you have your pieces there, you shake your board and mm -hmm. you are done. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then there is another one that looks really cute from KTBG Games called Rec Raiders. Um, it's a family-friendly game. It pretty much is you're going underwater and getting different pieces. The art is really cute and friendly as well. That's kind of it for like the big ones that I really saw that I thought looked pretty good. Um, there's still time for you to possibly check out ones that have already passed and get some funding. Um, so Mind Clash games who has started to become one of my favorites even though they've only put out like three games um, they just did a, a reprint and a collector's edition of a game called True Carry On where you are a magician oh, and yeah. you it's a worker placement um, and uh, resource collection to make tricks and you're a magician of one of the four different crafts which is like mysticism, illusion, mechanical and escape and then you go to town to get the resources you need, all this, mm -hmm. to build your trick. And then you go to the, I would say, the arena, the area, to perform it. And that's how you get your victory points. It's a huge table hog. Mm -hmm. It is super, super, super fun. I, th the rules are intuitive with the theme, I feel like. Okay. like if you, it's one of those things yeah. where you're like, well, it wouldn't make sense for me to go and do this. Because how would that fit with the show? And you're like, oh, you're right. It doesn't work that way. It works this way. I'm like, oh. Okay. Okay. Super great game. Um, their Kickstarter just ended a few days ago, but oh. they've always, they've usually always have had a pre-order okay. for a really good price. That's ch still cheaper than the retail that you can usually get um, so you can Kickstarter still get stuff it, with, even if the Kickstarter is over. It is called Trickerion Dalgard's Academy, and that brings an expansion to the game. Cool as well. Cool. Right. It's been my jam. All right. Any nerdy stuff? I got some nerdy stuff. Okay. So, um, um, so last Monday, you know how every D and D group D and D group has this this guy who doesn't show up every week. No, yeah. Have any sometimes, sometimes they have to go to Yakima or someplace like that, and they can't show up. So uh, what what our group does is we play uh, board games instead, and I brought Goatfish. Oh, which your is favorite? so so Chad much Gray, fun. Good, oh, a friend of the show. Uh, Goatfishgame.com, great game. Uh, we played it with five people first, which mm -hmm. is the maximum. Then we played it with six. It still worked. Kind of wanted maybe seven or ten mm -hmm. more cards. Uh, or I guess it would have to be for 12 more mm -hmm. cards. But um, great game. It's, it's based on Go Fish, but mm -hmm. there's uh, there's attacks and there's defenses. And goats. And goats. So, yeah, so the cards are so cute. Goatfishgame.com. So much fun. There are no fish, though. There's right? no fish. 
Interesting. And and then we, I finally got to play King of Tokyo, which I've wanted to play forever. I, have, I love that is game. Such that is a good great game. game. It is a fun game. <clears throat> it's it's a, fun a fun game. Fun game. What's really? We, we didn't miss that guy at all. So Chad, <laughs> mm, yeah. Obviously, they're talking about me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ignore it. <laughs> like all the other insults when I was just a little just kid. Just like everything else you do, Dad. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, yeah, we did interview Chad Gray. He's a friend of the show, and he did launch a successful Kickstarter. Did, yeah. And uh, hopefully he retweeted our stuff. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. Chad, Chad, do you remember us? Did you? I mean, we were... <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we were big now. And we're, <laughs> yes, you're famous and we're tiny. Wow. <laughs> he forgot about us already. Uh, what about you? What'd you do? Geekdom wise, mm -hmm. gosh, well, now that summer just started for me, I've just been board gaming, and that has been great geekdom. That and video games, and so it's nice to wake up in the morning and just play games. It's really weird because mm -hmm. every day feels like Saturday. Oh, yeah, okay. I bet. I can't, I didn't realize how much like the work dictated in me knowing what day of the week it was oh, yeah. until I didn't have to. Oh, yeah. wow. I was still trainings this summer and I got mm -hmm. other stuff working on like finishing up my master's but like you did Steve boom you That's finished right. your school I did. yes I, master? Did. Um, I, I want master. to I want to follow after your footsteps uh, <laughs> dad but yes. <laughs> son <laughs> but yeah so huh? lots of games like where I was talking yeah. about Trickerian I've played that two weeks in a row first the regular base game to get that down mm -hmm. And then the expansion, and even though it, it's supposed to take an hour and a half to two hours, it's really about three. Oh my gosh, it's so worth the time. It is such a rewarding game. So basically, you've been getting up in the morning, staying in your pajamas, getting your <laughs> cup of coffee, and sitting in one place all day long. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. That's Sounds the cool. Living around. Yeah. Right. Who doesn't it, want to do it's that? It's really awesome for a few weeks, mm -hmm. and then I go mad, and that's where I'm okay. like, all right, now I need to get to all of these different projects I want to do. So. Cool. Well, what have I done? I've done a lot of work, so. Yeah, you've been working hard. Been a, lot of, a lot of military duty, but I was able to get in sometime watching the new Marvel's Luke Cage, which is fantastic. I'm on episode all? two. What? Did no? it, get, it didn't get the best reviews yes. for season two. I don't get any two. emails or anything from Netflix. I'm <laughs> they didn't sorry. Email hey, Paul. They always yeah. notify me when Jessica Jones is coming out or that one with Danny, whatever. Iron, Iron Fist, Iron, Fist. <laughs> yeah. Iron Jerk. Yes. Iron Fist, and he's talking about the um, he's talking about the Netflix one, not the X version of Iron Fist. Just to be clear. Anyway, yes. Um, <laughs> so check out Luke Cage; it's pretty good. Along with a Cloak and Dagger. Ooh, I've been watching. I, I, watch I haven't. I've been wanting to watch that one. I've been watching. It's good. I'm about like three episodes in. It's really good. And the great thing about uh, this new show, Cloak and Dagger. Uh, is it has made the original miniseries that I bought in the 80s go up in price on eBay. So oh. watch Cloak and Dagger <laughs> for my benefit. And then I have been watching uh, Preacher. It's now on season mm. three. That is really good. I I'm only love to it. halfway through love second it. season, but it is, it is solid. Yes, it is solid. Another really good show is Legion. Mm. Yeah. They just wrapped up. I haven't seen the last few episodes. Oh, really? The last okay. two but it blew my mind when, when they came out and they were like, it's kind of going to be like a trippy horror, mm -hmm. kind of like, or trippy, right. scary mm -hmm. superhero movie. Uh -huh. Like, what? They didn't say superhero here, but it was like weird. And then watching it, one, I can't believe that actor has such a beautiful American accent. He like, mm -hmm. when you watch him in other stuff, like um, Madeline showed me a clip of Downton Abbey and he's like, hello sir. He was like okay. lower mm -hmm. and yeah. thick English accent. So, fun story is when you watch that, there's a scene where he talks in an English accent yeah, making fun that. of somebody. Mm -hmm. That's his real accent. That's right. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I could sound proper like this, but That's it's right. actually his accent. One um, thing about Legion, though, you cannot miss a minute of it or you, you just get lost. So, yeah, that is one of those mm -hmm. shows that even if I wanted to go on my phone, I can't. I'm just hooked. Right. And, like, the dance sequences. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I watched it again, um, the first ep two episodes again with my sister-in-law, so mm -hmm. she started it. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much foreshadowing. Like, so mm -hmm. watching through that, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, it already right. explained the last episode of season one, just from the first episode. I was trying to watch Legion, Preacher, and Outcast, all, like, kind of during the same wow. week. Oh, I need to watch Outcast. But, but I love Kurt. They're, they're all great shows, but I got them all confused. Because I'd wow. watch one, then you watch, well then just, watch the other you one. Might as well just eat some mushrooms yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. I just kind of stopped Let's, watching TV. They yeah. all have, like, this... Scary yeah. demon-like villains, I guess. Yeah. But, but the acting, 
Oh, really? On, yeah. like, and Legion, uh, uh, what's her name, what's her name? The main, the main girl in Legion? Uh, are you talking about... The actress. The Aubrey Plaza? Aubrey Plaza? 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 Yeah. Who Her plays Lenny? Acting is freaking amazing. Yeah, really good. She's so good. She's they really just good. in their chemistry, they're just the show's just amazing. I've every episode's been like a nine out of ten. Also, uh, another good news, more good news is Lucifer has been picked up by Netflix. I heard that. So oh, wow, yeah, because um, Fox stopped it. Boo, Fox. Boo, Fox. And, uh, for they many had reasons. not finished. Boo, Fox. Finish, I have not seen it. By yet. the way, wow. <laughs> Okay. Is there something happened? Did what's, they cancel something what, of yours? Or? What's really going on, Paul? Wow. <laughs> well, you've heard that they, uh, they're thinking, people are thinking of walking away from Fox. Huh? No. Because of uh, their political stuff. Oh, oh, we oh. We don't want to oh, talk about that. No, we, oh, I don't. We don't do political stuff here. Yeah. We don't uh, do, we're we're political. 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 Yeah, political. Yeah, political. Mm-hmm. Politicians are stupid. Mm-hmm. Politicians are stupid. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yes, there's only one I trust. Now there, um, the thing with uh, going with Fox is the only thing is just like with the acquisition mm-hmm. of their superheroes that Disney was trying to do. Right. That whole thing with that deal was interesting, where they're like, mm-hmm. "We're going to do this," and Fox is like, "Sounds good." So then they have to wait for whatever that organization is to approve it to make sure it's well, not they, a monopoly. Right. But then Comcast jumped in. That's right. And was like, "Put real oh, cash on the table." We are gonna, we are gonna like bump this up mm-hmm. so many billions of dollars, but all cash instead of stocks. I believe 16. So then Disney came back and it's like, "Okay, well we'll mix some cash into it and do more than that." Mm-hmm. And so now we're waiting. Okay. But so. I'm okay with Deadpool mm-hmm. working together with um, Spider-Man. Now get this: I am a I am a Disney stockholder. Uh-huh. Did not know Me this. Too. I'm a Disney stockholder. I as well. I don't own a lot, but I, don't know. I got a little got a little envelope in the mail asking me to vote on the acquisition. Like, if you want Comcast so or Disney? Thing? No, to vote on the the merger as a oh. shareholder. What do you mean? Like, yeah. if you approve or... You approve it as a shareholder. Totally approve. Well, of course you're going to approve One it. Marvel Universe? My, uh, my very few H-word tens guess. and tens of stocks will make all the difference <laughs> in the world. But I'm going to do it, because your vote matters. Mm-hmm. Does it? Because you know. they already tried to get the acquisition? <laughs> yeah. So, with that, um, you guys want to go into Azul. So, should go into so I do have a review of Azul. I do have a little bit of info. So, Azul's the new hot game. It came out in 2017. Um, it is an 8.0 rating on. It's only 8.0 because uh, people love it. Well, I know. Okay. It's still, it's it's still, still pretty good. Big, big hit this year. Now, it's a designer is Michael Kiesling, uh, artist Philippi Guerin, and Chris. Oh, great. I can't pronounce that name. Can you pronounce that? Quilla. Uh, Chris Williams. There you go. There you go. Um, it's by. There's a lot of publishers, but I believe. Um, like Peter Quill, Kelly Quill and Quill Doug talk about Plan B games. I think that's what they've been talking about. Plan and B. It's abstract sc- strategy. It's pattern building, set collection, and tile placement. Obviously, I have not played it because I'm reading off this little device here, but you'll get more of the info uh, off the review. Yes. Quick question Plan B mm-hmm. games, if you're listening, um, does our medical insurance still cover your games? The plan begins. <laughs> wow. Ooh. This yeah, is, that was a really loud ding. Right. Sorry. This is why you <laughs> can't, can't go into stand up. So, <laughs> and why Joe should never talk. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so, with that, let's check out the review. Hey, geeks. Welcome to another Geeks Tabletop Game Review. As always, I am Kelly, and this is Doug. Hello. And welcome to part one of the Spiro Desaris. Today, we're doing Azul. 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 I have the box right here. It is so nice. Check it out. So Azul was designed by Michael Kiesling. He's so when you done... shop in the actual box. Maybe. So designed by Michael Kiesling, he's done uh, a few other games. Heaven and Ale, which is our... Isn't that like... That is our part yeah. two for our Spiel des Jahres. So he's got a couple reviews. Spiel des Jahres awards coming out this year for him. Yeah. Nominations. Nominations, yeah. Awards haven't been given yet. Yeah. Um, he's also done Tikal, which was another Spiel okay. nominee. I believe it was a winner. Uh, I haven't looked that up recently. So apparently he's good at his games, and you should look at look yeah. them up. They're pretty good ones. Uh, it's art artwork by uh, Philippe Guerin and Chris Quilliams. Quilliams. There's Quilliams. an I there. Yeah. And what did he do? Uh, they both have worked on Arboretum, which is a, a card game about planting and building trees. Okay. Um, and kind of it's kind of set collecting a little bit with the trees. 
Uh, Philippe also did work on flick em that uh, Western one where you're flicking your disc around to move around and shooting at other bad guys and things like that. And Chris also did work on the new uh, Z-Man games, Carcassonne, that just came out uh, a few years ago. Oh, right. So the, the, the new, new artwork update, yeah, on that one. And it's published by Plan B Games. They've also done... Century Spice Road, Century right? Spice Road, yeah, yeah Golem yeah. Edition. They've got a few coming out this year, including the next one in the Century line. And I forget what the other one is, but it's kind of a underwater type one. I don't remember at all. Yeah, but they, they do really nice games, and so this one is really nice. Okay, but today we're talking about Azul. Today we're talking about Azul. So it's a two to four player game, and it does scale really well at two players, and it does scale really well at four players. Uh, it plays about 30 minutes, uh, but that's usually like your first game, uh, or if someone's taking a really long time and taking their move. So 30 is about right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can end the game early if you need to, and we'll we'll look at that as we do this. Absolutely. But you can even play it longer if you if you want to. Oh yeah, you can absolutely coordinate with the other players not to end the game too soon. Uh, they recommend an ages eight and up, and it's about forty bucks right now, if you can find it. If you can find it right now, we're sold out here at the store. I think second printing is sold out again. Yeah, it was first printing came in. We got some. We sold some. Uh, and then you couldn't then they find were it. Out. Uh, GTS was out because uh, they got the exclusive on it. And then we got it. They got a restock back in. We got some back in. We got even more back in. Sold through all of those. And now we're waiting on another restock. So yeah. it is pretty popular right now. So in Azul... <laughs> That's a reason for it to be nominated. Yeah, it's in Azul. Yeah. In Azul, we are working to uh, build these tile mosaics, mosaics yeah. that were popularized in uh, Spain by, I had this written down, but I totally forgot who it was. Or I, I had it looked up, but I totally forgot who it was. <laughs> but um, you've got a design that you're working on, and I'll, I'll hold up the board right now so you can see it, a design of these nice tiles. And so you're gonna work to place uh, tiles in them to fill them out and gain points by doing that. Now there's also extra bonus points that we'll work towards, um, but you can see yeah, that like well. completed rows or multiple colors, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the goal is simply to get as many tiles on the board as you can before the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And so we've got it set up for a two-player game, so we will cut right over to that. So we've got this set up for two players. Uh, we have uh, these factory tiles out here. These are the factory tiles. Two times the number of players plus one. Yep. And we will randomly shuffle all of the tiles in this nice little designed bag. And there's 20 of each color, right? Mm -hmm. For those of you doing math. Yeah. And you'll draw out four tiles and place them on each of the factory tiles to get started. Everyone gets a player board. There's two sides to it. We have the main one here where you have the design. The super and you duper have experience side. The more strategic one on the back where you're not limited to having only one of each. Or Location. Yeah, what is it? It's You can't have the same color in the row more than once on the front, that is. Yeah. But on the back, you can have... See, I can have those. Just can't there. be in the column. Just can't have them in the column. A little bit more strategy to it, uh, if you're into that. So we got the front side. We're all at zero, zero. I hate these things. And then we'll begin. Yeah, it's, it's not the best. I will say. Hey. So how do we play, Kelly? So on your turn, you can grab all of one color from any of these pads. So if I wanted just one orange, I could grab one orange, or I could grab all three of these ones over here. My goal is to fill each of these rows individually. So I need one here and five here, uh, and I can fill those however I wish. So I can grab three from here, and then on my next go around, I can grab these two over here uh, and put them down this way. Uh, however, if I grab three and the only one I have left to fill is this one, all of the extras fall down to the bottom. And they are now worth negative points. Yeah, and you're also limited to only having one color in the in the planning row at the same time. So once I put these ones here, I can never again pick blue for this row. So that's my and choice. I mean, I mean, even that, if you had them down here, you couldn't like pick these two red ones and put them down there. You need to you keep can't them mix to be the blue. Fill. So that's yours. So that's my choice there. The rest of the extra ones from the... T 
the rest of the extra ones from the pad go into the center with the first player token. Now, you can pick from the center, if you wish, if there's tiles in the center, uh, instead of picking from the pads. However, the first person to do so does grab the first person tile, and it goes down there for negative points. Falls to the floor is the term they use. Mm -hmm. Get extras. Now we're going to play through this really quick as just to show you uh, the way that a round goes. All right, so now that we've picked through all the tiles. The round is uh, over when all the tiles are gone. Yeah, now we'll do scoring. Now we'll start from the top and we'll see which rows we have completed. So Kelly has that one. I get one point. When she places it onto her display, she will see if that's uh, adjacent to any other tiles or vertical to any other tiles. And then you'll basically gain points for that. Now it's only for rolls that are full. So that's another point for me. And this goes back in the box. In the box. We'll this is it. the last one that's full. So that's another one point for me. And they go back in the box. These rows are not full. So they will stay there. And I get a chance to complete them next round. All right. So I will also be getting uh, three points. Two, three. And one and negative. My, and, oh, and I get a negative. Man, you got me. Now but that's basically... Side, the round. I only need enough blues to get a 10 extra points. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, as Kelly is saying, she has three of the blues on her board so far. If you collect all five of one design, you get an extra 10 points. So basically, Kelly's going to be looking to get those, but you've already filled up those rows right now. So you'll have to try and empty those out. So we will, at the end of the round, we'll do a refresh on all the factory tiles and then play more rounds until uh, someone has completed a horizontal row. After that, we will do final scoring, which is for every horizontal row you've completed, you get two points. For every uh, vertical row you complete, you get seven points. And for every set of five of the same type, you get an extra 10 points. So I made a bet earlier that I could finish this one in the next round. Turns out there's not that many oranges left. Yeah, there's only two there. And there's... Your first player. I'm first player. I should just be... Yeah, you could just take these. Yeah, I'll just take these. I'll put these here. Yeah, that's not rude at all. This game can get very spiteful for two players. Absolutely. Take the teal and give me all of the blues. <laughs> I'm not that rude. I'll just, I'll just go down here. See, what she's talking about is if I took that teal one... I have no place to put it. She'd be left with these three and have to all drop to the floor, and she'd lose five more points for this round. But I'm going to be nice because it's it'll be kind of hard for me to get four teals in the next coming rounds. So we'll do the next round of scoring. I get one point and then or one point and two points because this kind of forms a line this one is completed so this comes here i get one two three points one two three this one is completed and then i will get four points up to 11. i should say i'm not putting these extra ones in the bag i'm putting them aside yeah the the rules say to put them in the box you almost have a row there i almost have That's a column pretty impressive. there yeah so you'll basically play until someone completes a column or completes a row, and then do final scoring. But that kind of gives you, two yeah, you get negative two points. But you can see some of the early turns can be fairly close knit, um, and you you can't really tell who's gonna win. But you do see you strategies play. developing. I yeah. can see you trying to just get one of everything, which in game is worth more points because you start each one of these pieces are now worth four, five, six points. Uh, as they go in as opposed to mine which is I'm just trying to go for the colors and then get the things that are adjacent points and I'm just trying to guarantee that I get those colors extra bonus points at the end yeah which Doug screwed me on this round 
Not that, not that bad. Could have let me get the things. Yeah, but uh, we'll be right back with our pros and cons. So Christian did bring up a decent point, and he says it might be just his copy has the warped boards. Yeah, I mean, a lot of games um, with boards like this, where the cardboard boards like this, or the edges aren't wrapped, will be prone to warping due to like moisture levels and humidity and things like that. Yeah. Which starts our con list, I guess, yeah. uh, is these particular boards, because of that setback, does allow that if you're bumping your board at all, it spins it, and suddenly you have to remember if you were at 15 points or 14 points, or were you even at 35, because they're right next to each other. Um, that kind of stuff, and it's, it's annoying, if nothing else. I mean, you could even just have a central scoreboard piece of paper with, with, yeah piece uh, piece of paper or the central scoreboard them. yeah you steal it from carcassonne just probably having this detached and just have separate colors for that probably would have been a little bit better i still like the game it is the artwork and design oh, is really it's nice beautiful mm -hmm. it's well done the game has wonderful mechanics and as you saw we played two th two out of five rounds in what five minutes maybe yeah Less than that. Uh, so once you get the hang of it, it plays a little bit like Splendor, where you're just... Snapping off moves, not even waiting for the last person to finish their move. <laughs> it's getting them all set up. Mm -hmm. um, but you can take a little bit longer and wait about your... Wait about what you're going to do. Especially in a four-player game, what you're going to do. You need to have two or three options open. Mm -hmm. If you can think that far ahead. I mean, that last round we did where I got those... The, the black ones, yeah. I picked the two, and then you had the option to take one of them, but you didn't go for either of them, so that kind of left me to get one of them to finish that row and go from there. I was trying to make sure I wouldn't end up with negative points. I was trying to math out how many more times I'd have to pull things mm -hmm. uh, and go with that. Yeah, and I mean, getting to you counting for, for negative points, that this game can get pretty cutthroat. Uh, at two players. Especially at two players. Yeah. Uh, in four players, it takes a little bit more... Collusion is collusion. kind of it. Yeah, yeah. it takes... You, you have to talk to, hey, if you do that, he's totally going to get that free fiver over there. Yeah. Kind of thing. And I mean, we, we had that issue when we were playing with your mom, with Holly. Oh, yeah. Where... She was just having fun with the pretty tiles. Yeah, that... My and... mom's a fantastic player. She just doesn't think much ahead. Mm-hmm. And that just left you to make basically all the best choices for your board and kind of left me. Yeah, the first left game I was playing after mom and could screw you over. And then the second game you were playing after mom and I was getting screwed over. It, it can be like that if someone doesn't have a clear strategy in mind, but I don't think it's too much of a problem to deal with. What Things about that flip side, though? The flip side is interesting. Um, you have many strategies that you can try for. Basically, the one I tried when we did it the first few times was building the center row and then kind of spreading from there. Getting points that way. Getting points that way. Rather than where you, you just did start on edge. the right. You start on the edge. I tried and completed column by column so that I wouldn't accidentally duplicate inside a column. I was playing with Jason and we did the same thing where we came around to that last tile to go in and we're like, wait a minute we can't pick this color and suddenly the fives that we had picked went to the floor Ooh! because that was the only thing we had open and we both were like oh we get this cool thing and we come to scoring and we're like wait a minute this can't get placed on the board and that becomes interesting because like we said for that one you can't have the same color uh in the same column more than once because you'll end up having more than five yeah. but you can have them in the same row that's totally fine but with that back one it wasn't until we actually tried to place it because um, at the time that we picked the cards, mm -hmm. it was totally legal because... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't that we got knocked for it at the picking time. It was got We got knocked for it at the placing. That's interesting. Did because the placement of something... Did you look, in, did you look in the rules about it? It could have been that where we were placing that top one, we just weren't thinking about it. Hmm. And somewhere ahead of those fives, we just screwed ourselves over yeah that's that's one of the things to to watch out for that because that seems like uh, a little bit of a clash with the rules because you can have yeah if you had four red ones over here and then a one red one above 
but at some point one of those is your sixth red one. Yeah, but now that I'm thinking about it, now that um, if you started that last row with the red, and that is your fifth red to go on the board, then you, you shouldn't have been able. You, know, you shouldn't have been able to pick reds that go anywhere else. So, yeah, you kind of misplayed a little bit, but. Either way, we still screwed ourselves over. Yeah, it's still a negative point. But I like it. I wish that we had one so I could buy it and play with my family. Because right. it's it's simple enough that you can sit down after dinner and play like two or three games oh, yeah. uh, right off the bat pretty quick. So, yeah. Definitely recommend. Uh, I'm thinking this one might get the award. You're thinking so? Yeah. I definitely like it more than Heaven and Nail. Mm-hmm. Well, this isn't in Spoilers. This, this isn't the same category. As it's Heaven not the same category. This is the spiel. Heaven and Ale was the Kinner spiel. What was the one we were playing today? Was that the German Kenner one spiel. that's coming up against this one? Hmm? The one, the card game we were playing before today. Yeah. That's oh my goods. That's been out for a while. Okay. But that's uh, Alexander Fister's game. He uh, has also done Isle of Sky and okay. Broom Service. So it's not. So what's the ones in the category against this one? This one is Luxor, which I also have coming from Kickstarter. Um, and I believe The Mind was this one as well, which is it's not by the same designer as the game, but it is plays very similar to it. It's not quite... Games I haven't played yet. Yeah, it's not as hard as the game is. Um, okay. We played the game, right? I have played the game, yes. Yes, the game. So uh, this was part one of our series on the Spiel des Jahres. Uh, we've got Heaven and Ale coming up uh, probably Eventually. on the next episode, yeah. And then, like I said, we have Luxor on its way. It should get here July, <laughs> barring any unforeseen circumstances with shipping and all of that stuff. And we've got a few uh, other ones in the pipeline. I've got Founders of Gloomhaven coming in. Are we so. going to do Topiary? Topier, yeah, that one just came out from Renegade Games. So yeah, we've got a list yeah. of four or five just ready to go. If you have any game recommendations for us, shoot us an email at geekscascadia at gmail.com or send us a line on Twitter, uh, Geeks of Cascadia. Twitter. I'm also on Twitter. It's uh, Captain Napkin without any vowels. It'll, it showed up on the, the video. You can shoot me it a line up again. there. Right yeah, here. Right here. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, guys. Well, that was a really cool review yes. um, that they did with Azul. I know that's been mm -hmm. a huge hit. Um, kind of like Paul was saying, he was like, only 8.0. Yeah. Um, Still I, I high have, rating, though. It is super high, to be fair, but yeah. I've heard so many people talk about it. Mm -hmm. it's, I see it, you know, getting sold out. I mean, they're... It's like there's posts on um, Board Game Geek yeah. and the other one I probably mm -hmm. follow. Uh, board game spotlight is it constantly like today i saw at least three posts of people playing azul and lots of really beautiful pictures people are taking mm -hmm. of just oh, even yeah. just playing with the tiles like not even in games like off to the side making some cool stuff uh it looks really really pretty and awesome and i heard it i mean it's and then even like mm -hmm. they were saying like the, the gameplay is it's very unique to that game and i like how doug and kelly really go into the mechanics of the game mm -hmm. and the really descriptions and they kind of lay everything out there and uh so thanks again for Doug and Kelly putting out the review. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. And if you want a game that you love to be reviewed, you can contact us at geeksofcascadia at gmail.com or on Twitter at Geeks of Cascadia or Facebook at Geeks of Cascadia. Uh, do we have an Instagram, too? Yep, it's um, Geeks of Cascadia, if you believe that. Wow, amazing. I wish we could get an email at the ogmail.com because we are the OG, right? Right, we are the OG. Dated I myself. Think. 90s reference. So, mm. also out there, um, I would love to get emails from any of you out there, especially the ones that are from, let me see here, the four people in Brazil watching us, uh, Egypt, India, Belgium, there's also this guy or gal from the United Kingdom, you keep listening to us, email us, yes. say, hey, how's it going? Or if you, it's if, me, I like you. If you're watching us on the YouTubes, yes. comment and like our video like Matthew Collins last week. Awesome. Oh, shout Matthew out. Matthew Collins yes. nice. is my new favorite fan. We love you. Also, even if some of these yeah. other countries, even if you don't speak English or type it, type it in your native language. Yes. We've Ma got translators we Matthew can use. We would from, love to hear he's it. He's from the country of Wenatchee. Whoa. <laughs> I've never heard that. It's really <laughs> weird. Huh. Oh. We kind of figured that out. Yeah, right. <laughs>
Not everybody so, watching that. And remember, <laughs> folks, please go on Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes. They all rate. Facebook also rates. Give us five stars. And you can write like, whatever like review that you want. Again, you can put five stars and say, you suck. That's fine. We're okay with that. You should probably tell us why we suck. That way we can improve. Yes. So always give us five stars. Right? Fair well, enough. Yes, exactly. I mean, if you're going to flame us, at least give us oh, five yeah. stars. Yeah, totally. Because you just brought that's, us that's down. Right. You brought like, us down. Like, if, I'm on, if I go out to, for dinner mm-hmm. and it's terrible and I go down Yelp, I give them five stars, but then I say how bad it was. Exactly. Wow. And that's what you should do to us. Like when you that's get, how we improve. It's like when you get into a ninja fight, you go against your enemy, you still throw five Chinese stars into them, a.k.a. shurikens, but could then you Japanese, tell them why you Japanese don't Japanese like them. Could be stars. It could be. It could be. Could be. Yep. could be Canadian stars. <laughs> Who Canadian knows? Stars? Exactly. Yeah. The only one is Michael Bublé. You know <laughs> right. So, do we have anything else? I think I'm spent. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I just want to be I've had done better. with this. I've had better, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We love our fans out there who've yep. been uh, checking us out every episode. So with that, embrace the nerd, and I hope you make that saving throw.